it is Peter and Ben Hello. from What Culture Gaming. We are at Gamescom 2016, day two. It's very busy, lots of people. Yeah. Yeah, but very exciting. We have seen Dishonored 2. We've seen some uh, brand new gameplay, which was very, very interesting stuff. Um, and we're here to talk about it. Absolutely. So, first impressions, Ben. Well, I mean, it looks a lot like the last game, yeah. obviously, but it looks like they've added a lot of new stuff. Obviously, this time you're no longer just playing as Corvo. You do have the option of playing as Corvo with all his powers that have been tweaked in some ways. Yeah. We only saw some Emily footage, yeah. uh, who is the rightful empress who has been dethroned, and she's working with Corvo to try and get her throne back. That's absolutely right. Emily, of course, has her own set of powers. Um, we didn't actually see anything, as far as I'm aware, we've not seen anything that hasn't already been shown before. Uh, but we, we saw the, the shadow monster thing. Yeah, yeah. We, we were discussing it earlier and it's, it's a lot like the darkness, sort of like a shadow arm. She uses it to go into some kind of power where she crawls along the floor in stealth mode and also it's sort of like the uh, her version of Corvo's blink power. So she pulls herself up to ledges with that weird, creepy black arm thing. Uh, we also saw the domino effect, which is very exciting. Again, that's been shown before, but it, uh, you know, it's always good to see more of that. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was really interesting because while the the person who was playing the demo was trying to go stealth for a while, it was I say it did still remain stealthy. But as soon as someone saw them, they were just like, right, I've dominoed you all together. I'm going to cut your head off. And then four or five people's heads all just popped off at the same time. So it looks like combining the powers, there's a real scope for what you can achieve that way. Yeah, I uh, now I might be remembering this wrong because I tried to play a no kill run through in the first one. But I don't recall being able to slice a man in half in the first one, which is what happened in some of the gameplay. Yeah, so there was a clip we were shown where she was infiltrating a witch's coven kind of place. And I don't know if maybe they were just constitutionally weaker yeah, yeah. as people, like weird zombie things that she could just slice in half. Uh, those were the only people we saw sliced. But the majority of the game demo that we saw was set in like a mechanical clockwork house, which was touted in game as being a feat of engineering for their time. Yeah. And I think it was a feat of game design as well, because the whole room was just folding in on itself and swapping around. And as he was trying to infiltrate it, he was pressing the lever to switch the room around and then just teleporting at the last minute as the doors were closing. He was he was avoiding fights by just shutting doors behind him and having entire rooms fold back up on themselves so they couldn't get through. Yeah. So again, combining that kind of stuff with the new powers could be really interesting. Yeah. Now, my, uh, my thoughts on the clockwork sequence, the mansion sequence, it seemed to me like there was a cutscene in which you encountered uh, a significant character, the man who owns the house, and it seemed to trigger uh, an alarm, and there was, there was no option to remain, uh, you know, undercover, stealth. So I'm wondering if there's maybe a slightly more action focus in this game, but uh, only time will tell, I guess. Yeah, it could well be. It could also be that they wanted to show the most exciting yeah. part of the game, really, or one of the most exciting parts of the game to show the kind of stuff that you can do. I will say, though, for that action section, I wasn't too impressed because they showed off the new clockwork soldiers, of which they're, it seems they're going to be quite a common enemy in the game. But they were introduced in this level, it seemed. And fighting them looked pretty uninteresting. She used a couple of powers on them, she used her gun, didn't really do anything. And the only way she could do anything was by getting leap attacks, so by dropping from a great height and using a knife. And she had to do that two or three times to each one to take it out, and it was just exactly the same for each one she took out, just jumping on like a, a bookcase and then jumping off again. Yeah. It, it didn't look amazing, but the stuff that they showed against human enemies made of flesh and blood looked far more interesting. Yeah. And of course, as with any decent sequel, one thing that I did notice was an improvement on the visuals, which is always good. Uh, I think they still maintained the unique kind of charm of the original art style of Dishonored 1, um, but it just looks crisper, more fluid. There were a lot more particle effects, I think, a lot more smoke and electricity and all that kind of thing with the powers. So do you think it looked good? Yeah, absolutely. I think with the addition of the new character, it's really going to change things up. And the fact that you can also play as Corvo, so there's that yeah. replayability if you want it. But it just looks like, in the best possible way, more Dishonored. 
And if you're a fan of the original Dishonored, it looks like it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, so uh, we're both very excited to play it. Um, it's out on the 11th of November, I yeah. believe, so not too long to wait now. We've also seen Prey, and uh, we're going to get onto that in a separate video. So, as always, stay locked to What Culture Gaming for all the very best coverage of Gamescom 2016. Thank you very much. Yeah, see you later.